So today we're going to be taking a look at the newest version of the Laurier Neptune. Let's see what changed, let's see if it improved, and let's get into it. We have a diameter of about 38.5 millimeters, a lug to lug of 47, and a height of 12.7 with a 20 millimeter lug width. So some of our specifications, we have a Miyota 9000 series movement, uh, I believe it's the 90S5. We have a 28,800 vibration push per hour. It's going to be somewhere around the 40 hour power reserve mark. We have a 200 meter water resistance with a screw down crown, 120 click bezel, and a plexiglass crystal with a very, very nice dome to it. And all the loom is applied with BGW9. And that is about it. So moving on to the dial, which I really think is kind of the main point, the main star of this show. It is very simple, very clean, and very much inspired by something like a Tudor Submariner. It's got that same triangular 36912 and the circular uh, for all the other markers. As you can see, we get the nice minute markers on the edges. Very simple text on the dial, just the, the branding, the automatic, and the water resistance. I like that they kept it pretty, pretty uh, simple. Not too much text. They also didn't make the text too large. I think it fits in with the design. It looks clean. It looks classic. So for the handset, we have the arrowhead on the hour hand and the, you know, kind of Dauphine style for the minute. This is very much a handset common to Omega watches and their Aquaterra and their older Seamaster ranges. So it is a little bit of a hodgepodge of different inspirations, but I think it's not only executed well, but it's just a nice clean, simple design that looks really, really good. I like that they kept the bezel very minimal as well. No hash marks to delineate the 15 minute mark. It's not necessarily a true diver. It's more of a dress diver, which is kind of right up my alley. Moving a little closer into this dial, you do see we have this very nice deep black dial here. You can see all the loom plots. The actual base plot is very nice stark white, which is matching the Laurier text, while the actual loom plots themselves lean a little bit more cream. I would like to see those as like a more of a stark white just so it's a little bit more monochromatic but I don't think it looks bad as it is and I think maybe it even adds a little bit of a you know kind of vintage flair to it very nicely done on all the text you can see it's very crisp very clean all the loom plates are actually filled in pretty well right here I can't tell if this is a distortion from the crystal or just the bottom of that plots a little not filled in enough but None of it looks too bad at all. The hands, a little bit of roughness, a little bit of dust around them, but that's nothing to expect. I mean, this is a wash that retails for $500 or really $499. There's not too much going on in this dial. It's very simple, but what's done here is done well, and I like the little bit of depth that both the plexiglass crystal adds as well as the puffiness of those loom plots. You can see as I turn the crystal a little bit, you start getting that distortion, that nice dome effect. And it's nice that they were able to add this pretty significant dome while keeping the watch fairly thin in itself. So moving on to the case of this watch, you can see it's done very simply. We have vertical brushing on the lug tops, we have horizontally brushing on the lug sides, and we have this nice high polished relief, this chamfer here along the edge between the finishing, or at least between the case sides. Uh, one thing to notice is that apparently in the version two, the previous version, this chamfer was a little bit not only less chamfered I guess you can say but also it was a little bit more angular this one's a little flatter to allow more surface area for polishing a little bit of a redesign in the case shape and you can see here they actually made the entire case thinner than the version 2 very much created a turn down to those lugs which was missing in the previous generation which is very very welcome here the last generation wore pretty flat while this one gives a nice curvature it goes pretty much r almost below the case back here so it's going to sink into the wrist pretty nicely. We have drilled lug holes which is always a welcome addition, always easy to change straps. You can see the vertical brushing continues onto the bracelet here. We have a taper from 20 to 16 at the clasp. Very nice rectangular links, a uh, unique style that I haven't seen too often. Going to a nice fold out clasp. Sign Laurier logo, push button deployant, double push button with three holes of micro adjust and screwed links. Very nicely done bracelet. We have a lot of articulation in those links. Very, very comfortable fit on the wrist. We have even some high polish uh, on the sides of the clasp here, which is completely unnecessary, but a nice addition. Really just shows that attention to detail. 
And obviously I think you can tell we have a pretty big crown here relatively to the size of the watch. It is definitely harkening back to those vintage big crowns, but it is definitely functional. It is easy to grip, easy to manipulate, and I don't think it detracts from the look at all. Definitely fits with the vintage vibe that they're going for with this watch. So let's put the watch on the wrist. Uh, earlier I was wearing this little Casio edifice here. Very cool watch for the money. And here we have the Laurier sitting on my 6.5 inch wrist. As you can see, that relatively tame 47 millimeter lug to lug length makes it sit very, very nicely. Uh, and also I can just tell visually from the top, it just looks like it fits better on the wrist compared to the previous version. Uh, very, very comfortable on the wrist. Again, this bracelet, not only the taper, but actually the way the links articulate, the fact that we have female end links here, it just, fits very, very comfortably on the wrist itself. I mean, yeah, as you can see there, it really, really does just curve down into the wrist very, very easily. Very, very comfortable to wear. And overall, I mean, for a dive watch, it is not thick at all. And a good amount of that thickness is coming from the crystal itself. So relatively, it is a pretty slim watch, very comfortable on the wrist, very nice. And you got those three holes of micro adjust, so you definitely can get a good fit in there. Very nicely done. Now, while the bracelet is very well done, I am not a fan of it, and that's for a reason I will tell later in the pros and cons section. But basically, I really like to wear it on these rubber kind of straps, these silicone straps. This one is a green one by Monster Straps. Very, very nice. Uh, because you have this nice plain black dial, you can really have fun with whatever color strap you'd like. I'm a big fan of green, so I think this nice dark green complements it very well. And on the wrist, as you can see, there is going to be a slight gap between the lug case and the end of the lugs. It's not anything like Nomos level super long lugs, but for some people, they really like those lug holes to be really close to the case. Something to take note about, but it definitely has not bothered me at all, and I think it looks good in itself. Staying with that silicone strap vein, this is probably my favorite combination. This is the silicone strap from Archer. Uh, probably one of the most comfortable and soft straps I've tried, uh, at least at the price point. I think it goes really well with the white tone of the loom itself, the monochromatic look of the watch. And overall, it's a very comfortable combination to wear, a very summery combination. And I really just do dig it. Again, you're going to get that tiny, tiny bit of lug gap, but nothing too dramatic, nothing too crazy. Very, very comfortable on the wrist. Uh, depending on where you wear your watch, uh, the crown might dig in because it's a little bit on the larger side, but it is very, very well sized. And just really quickly, since we have it here on the wrist, I will just note my chapter ring is misaligned slightly to the right, so the pip does not line up properly with the 12 o'clock. Moving into the loom shot, you see we have that nice application of BGW9 which really lets it shine this beautiful bluish color. It shines very bright, very vividly. You even have the pip at 12 o'clock shining, or really it is a triangle. But all the elements are really well loomed, even the very end tip of that seconds hand. So you really do have very, very good legibility in the dark. One thing I really do like also is that because of that plexiglass crystal, the loom is actually reflecting on the edges and it almost makes it look like there are pips along those edges that are actually lit up. So pretty cool feature. Does it last forever? No. Will it get the job done? Probably. Uh, they could have probably done a little bit of a thicker application, but it is nicely done. Here comparing the Timex to the Laurier, you see the color temperatures are very, very similar. Uh, basically just meaning Laurier did a pretty good job on the loom. Again, it doesn't last forever, but it is bright while it does last. So pros and cons of this watch, I think one of the biggest pros is just the vintage aesthetic of it. It is very nicely executed. It's very close to something like a Tudor Submariner. Uh, and I don't think that's a bad thing at all. They're very nicely designed and now they go for, you know, $3,000 and up. And at $500, this Laurier gets a lot of the job done in modern construction, modern materials with that vintage vibe. So it's kind of the best of both worlds. And it has a lot of really good elements, like it has the 38, 38 and a half ish case size, whichever one it is. And at that sizing, it's nice because there's not a lot of divers under 40 millimeters. 
they've redesigned the case from the version 2 to where it's not only thinner but it wears more ergonomically and that was my biggest gripe with the previous version now the watch is just so comfortable to wear on the wrist it really is a joy it's a pleasure it doesn't really stick off the wrist at all um, i think maybe if only one thing could be done about the case itself maybe they could just reduce the lug length slightly but even then i think it does wear well as it is a slight kind of pro slash con will be the acrylic crystal. Some people will just never get on the acrylic train. Uh, maybe they think we've moved past it. I'm not going to pay above $200 unless it has sapphire or something like that. And for that, I say, I mean, I think the acrylic works here. It's definitely leaning heavily into that vintage feel. And an acrylic crystal is what they would have used or a plexiglass crystal. So it's less shatter resistant yes it's less scratch resistant but you always have poly watch you know so you can always buff those scratches out a little bit not really that much of a big deal and you get those beautiful distortions you get as you saw previously in the loom shot those like nice little halo from the loom pips so i personally kind of like the acrylic execution so moving on to cons and one of the biggest cons for me is kind of the bracelet and more specifically the bracelet taper in itself the bracelet is well constructed, it has the screw links, it has a nice articulation, it's a very kind of almost unique design, but the way it tapers I think is a little too aggressive. Uh, I've, I'm fine with a 20 to 16 taper, I've had watches that have that before, but I think the way Laurier does it is a little bit too quickly. Uh, it goes from 20 to 16 very very fast and I think it leaves the watch looking a little bit off balance, almost heavy on top. Um, I'll try to throw in a shot somewhere so you can kind of see what I mean a little bit. But that thing, that's something that really detracts from the watch a little bit for me. I don't like to wear it on the bracelet because of that reason. So that's something you should be aware of in case you may not, you know, want to wear the watch off the bracelet. Uh, and also the, the noise of the rotor is there. Uh, Miyotas are kind of famously a little bit noisy, but I think this is not as bad as some Miyotas have been. Uh, in a very quiet room, yes, you're going to hear it. But, you know, going from day-to-day -day activities, going to the office, going on a walk, you know, whatever you need to do, I don't think you're going to hear it that often. So it's not that big of a deal. It's just something that I should mention. So final thoughts on this Laurier. I mean, for $500, I think it's a great watch. They pretty much have created the best version of the Neptune to date. Uh, the version 1, I think the dial diameter was a little too small. For the version 2, it was a little too slab-sided, so it wore a little awkward on the wrist, I feel. And for this one, they took everything that worked and got rid of everything they didn't. They made it a little bit shorter, they made it a little bit thinner, and they made it more ergonomic with that uh, lug curve down. So all those just really work to the benefit of the watch. It shows on the wrist, it's comfortable on the wrist, and it just looks good. So if you're really enjoying that vintage aesthetic, you want maybe a dressier dive watch, or you just want a dressier styled watch in a way, I think this can fit the bill. Uh, it's a great watch. I don't think you'll be disappointed if you get one at all. And I hope this video helped. Thanks for watching.